Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ravistin, and I'm a PhD student at the Scientific Computing uh, Research Group in Oxford. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm, I'm a third year PhD student at the Scientific Computing Research Group, and I've been working with Adrian on um, introducing encryption for container checkpointing. Um, so uh, over the past few years, container checkpointing has been introduced in several container engines, container runtimes, and more recently with container orchestration systems such as Kubernetes. And it is used with different Linux distributions um, and they all have the same problem. When used in production, container checkpoints in, uh, contain sensitive data, which could be passwords, um, user data, or essentially application data that is included in the checkpoint. So um, one example of how um, encryption is being used to protect this data is was presented a few years ago by Andy. Um, essentially how they introduced the encryption mechanism in, in, in the Borg system is uh, creating a tar archive and then encrypting it and then saving this in external storage. However, there are some problems with this. Um, first, um, I think enabling this, for example, in Kubernetes and making it available for di different distributions um, is um, it's not very easy to maintain and easy to introduce. For example, um, if we want to introduce in this in Kubernetes, we have changed the container runtime and there are multiple of them. Uh, um, and also we have to modify the um, container engine and um, key management is also a big problem. How do we distribute keys and then uh, make sure that um, they're available across different cluster nodes. And uh, the performance of course is, um, there is an overhead of uh, and encrypting the data itself, but also performance overhead um, in terms of how, how much time does it take to encrypt the checkpoint. Um, so in, in, in Kubernetes, the checkpointing mechanism works by um, essentially, um, for example, Cryo calls RunC and RunC calls Cryo. Cryo creates a, a checkpoint, then we save the configuration files and we create the tar archive. So um, we're looking at how we can introduce a built-in uh, mechanism in Creo that uh, would allow us to encrypt the checkpoint, uh, the check, the image files um, themselves. And um, Creo already has um, um, integration with GNU-TOS, and GNU-TOS provides the encryption primitives that um, allow us to encrypt essentially the images that Creo creates. Um, we can um, we can reuse most of the code because um, there are uh, a few functions that read and write images, and we just need to uh, modify the, these functions to encrypt the data when it's being written and to decrypt it when it's um, when it's being read back. Um, by encrypting different images, we can also extend the crit tool, which is a tool that allowed, allows you to uh, decode uh, images and modify them. Um, and we can also optimize the, the way encryption is being implemented because um, there are different types of images in Creo. Uh, uh, they have different format and uh, by essentially um, encrypting the specific parts, we can choose what um, ciphers are being used, for example, for encryption. Um, and also by implementing this in queue, we can um, essentially provide end-to-end -end encryption, meaning that the data is encrypted before it's being written to, to disk, and then it's decrypted when, when it's being read back. So um, this sensitive data is never being stored in plain text. Um, so one, and there are three main types of images. Um, protobuf images, raw images, and um, uh, memory pages in Creo. Uh, prot protobuf images are essentially um, data structures encoded in protobuf. And uh, for, for this type of uh, images, we used 
a streams effort that allows us to encrypt small messages and use uh, nonce or number used on ones to provide randomness so that if the same uh, plain text is encrypted uh, multiple times, you'll get different cipher texts. Um, it, um, it's, the implementation is, uh, when the implementation software is um, performant and it provides authentication, meaning that if the cipher text is modified, the decryption is going to fail. Um, so this is an example of how the checkpoint restore functionality in Qt looks like. So we have uh, this PB write and PB read functions. And um, essentially these functions are used uh, throughout the code base to read and write image files. And then essentially adding the encryption mechanism looks something like this. So we first load a public key. Um, uh, we, we generate a token. The token is used as um, for symmetric encryption. Um, we encrypt the, the token itself and save it into a new image file called uh, crypto.image. Um, we, we then use the, the token itself to encrypt the content of, of, of the image before it's being written uh, to disk. Um, so essentially the only the image file that is being created that is not encrypted is the, is the new image file that contains the encrypted token. Um, during restore, we first uh, um, load a private key. The private key is used to decrypt the token. The token is then used to decrypt all other images in Crew. Um, and another image type are raw images. So these are essentially images that are created uh, with external tools such as IP tables, IP. And um, the way this works in Crew is um, Crew creates a fork that then runs exec with the external tool and then uses the standard input output file descriptors to save the data to, to files. So essentially to introduce the encryption here, um, as we, we can create something like a pipeline. So uh, we fork a separate process and then replace the input output file descriptors with pipes um, so that the, for example, tar is going to write uh, to a pipe. And then the, um, uh, the encryption process is going to read from the pipe and then write to uh, encrypt the data and write it to, uh, to the output file. And then the reverse is uh, essentially during restore. Um, and then for memory pages, um, this is pretty straightforward because essentially we just have to, um, uh, the encryption is, is straightforward because we just have to encrypt every block. However, during restore is slightly more complicated because um, we have things like copy and write uh, memory pages, um, but also uh, functionalities such as pre-copy and how to deduplication. So uh, pre-copy, uh, pre-dump, um, is essentially um, iterative checkpointing. So um, it means that um, we, we want to be able to decrypt individual memory pages. Um, in contrast to um, to other image uh, other image files, uh, memory pages have fixed block size. So um, I I reached out to um, Daki uh, from the Ignotieva team then ask for essential advice on how we can implement this to, to be more efficient. And uh, he suggested to use the AES-XTC um, um, uh, um, cipher. Um, so it's essentially, uh, it allows us to use initialization vector instead of nonce. And this means that um, we can use in-place encryption. So we can encrypt every book um, um, every memory page has a separate book, and we can also use the hardware acceleration for AES, which is about five times faster. Um, and it's a widely used uh, uh, encryption um, um, encryption algorithm. So the way this works with um, 
with um, standard with checkpoint you can restore images is pretty simple. So we generate AES keys, um, we save them to to the image file, um, and then we just encrypt the data and uh, decrypt it on the restore. Um, it, it becomes more complicated when we have to do the restore within the position independent code in the parse uh, in, in a position independent code because we cannot use Knuki OS there. So um, again, we we can use a pipeline. So um, we request um, the memory pages that need to be read from, or essentially the offset that needs to be read from from the pages images and the number of pages. And then we um, use the period system call to um, read this part of the uh, of the memory pages and then use process VM write V to essentially write the pages in the uh, correct place after they're being decrypted. So this is essentially the most efficient way um, I could think of uh, implementing this. And, um, and we also extended CRIT um, um, to be able to decode encrypted images, and this is pretty stra straightforward. So when um, when the cipher image, uh, when the image with encrypted keys exists, it means that the checkpoint is encrypted, and it essentially um, automatically detects that it has to the to decrypt the images. Um, it also has a TOS key uh, additional option that allows to specify the, the path to the decryption key. So for example, um, um, we extended the GTM tests. So when we run all query tests, they, they're running with encryption and without encryption. And uh, we can also specify the um, private key that is used for the tests. Um, so I will show you a quick demo. Um, so for example, um, so this is a default configuration file that allows us to specify different CRE options. And in this case, we have the encrypt option specified. So when this option is used um, during checkpoint, Crew is going to encrypt the images. So this essentially um, just creates a checkpoint of, of the loop process above. Um, and the cipher image essentially contains the keys. Um, so it looks something like this. And if we want to um, decrypt an image, it essentially loads the, the key from the cipher image and then decrypts the um, the content of the image itself. Um, then essentially the restore mechanism um, works in a similar way. So it automatically detects if the images are encrypted by just checking if um, uh, this image with the key, with the encryption key is there. And then it loads the private key, decrypts the symmetric key, and then decrypts the rest of the images. Um, one thing that, um, so for example, we have different types of workloads. Uh, some applications use many threads, meaning that when we create a checkpoint, this checkpoint is going to contain a lot of small files. Uh, other applications, for example, in this case, memhole, they just allocate a huge block of memory 
In this case, the checkpoint will contain large amount of um, small amount of files, but a very large files. In, in this case, memory pages. Um, and So for example, um, this creates a checkpoint for Manhawk, and we can see that there are different files. Uh, we can see that the image is encrypted because um, it contains this cipher.image. Um, in contrast, if we if we run something like stress ng. Um, we get large amount of small files because it creates many trades. And um, this also, so when we did the evaluation on how does this encryption mechanism compare to, for example, using OpenSSL, GNU-TOS, Edge, gnu So essentially what we did was uh, we used an action script that is triggered uh, at, with the post dump hook, meaning that after the checkpoint is created, it will turn this script and it would encrypt the images. So when we have large amount of small files, then it takes a lot of time to iterate through the images. Um, but essentially we can see that um, using in-place encryption or encrypting the images as they're being written is uh, in general, faster. Um, and conclusion is, um, we we were we implemented um, an, a mechanism to encrypt images uh, within Creo. Um, it allows us to be easily integrated with container engines and uh, container runtimes without uh, needing additional modifications. And uh, it allows us to decode the images. And for future work, we want to integrate this with a, a pre iterative checkpointing and um, memory deduplication, and perhaps introduce a compression uh, for the images. And uh, thank you for listening. And do you have any questions? Yeah, Andre. <laughs> Yeah, if we're talking about the checkpoint restore containers, we need to think about checkpoint restore file system. So should we encrypt the like file system snapshot? And if we should to do this, how we are going to do this and how it works now in Kubernetes, for example? Um, so the file system changes are saved. Um, essentially, they're handled by the container. So, uh, I do I think that he implemented this in four months first. Um, essentially, it gets a diff of what files have been changed in the container. And then, essentially, this diff is saved as a tar file. Um, but, uh, I mean, this is handled by the container. And essentially, Creo doesn't handle the file system changes. But also, uh, we have to use different encryption algorithms. Like, for example, uh, in this case, we have public-private key. So create uh, an encrypted checkpoint, we, we need only the public key itself, uh, meaning that um, in the case of forensic analysis, for example, when we want to create periodic checkpoints without the need to decrypt them, we want to decrypt them on the specific file system. Um, and with uh, file systems, for example, if we use symmetric keys, um, the key is within the container or within the system that creates the checkpoint. So, um, yeah, it's, it's um, more complicated. Um, I mean, um, we don't currently handle file system changes in Creo, right? No, we're not going because it's like, uh, it's not the work what we're supposed to do. We just create the checkpoint resource of processes yeah. and then like other tooling should create a snapshot of file system. Yeah. And if we are talking about like, Kubernetes, it looks reasonable to use the same mechanism to, to encrypt the file system and to encrypt the set of images because set of images is like, 
it's it's like the, the other part of the yeah. container. Um, I mean, so we have two options. One is uh, to encrypt um, uh, the images as we will do it for you. The other one is to, uh, for example, um, encrypt the OCI image that contains the checkpoint. Like we were discussing this, and there are different types of, like for example, if you want to introduce encrypted OCI images, then uh, we have to change different projects and it will be introduced in a different level. Could you elaborate a bit more about your memory page protection? So like use case and threat model, because you're only requiring confidentiality for that, you're not requiring integrity. So so, so what are you using it for? Maybe you you mentioned, I missed it. Um, so the idea uh, of using this uh, AES, uh, X, XTC is uh, to allow us, for example, um, doing memory identification to remove specific in, uh, uh, memory pages from the checkpoint without um, es essentially while preserving the ability to decrypt the content. Because if we if we create, uh, if we encrypt a continuous block of memory and then we delete part of it, then it wouldn't be possible to decrypt it if we use, uh, for example, stream cipher or um, did that answer your question? Uh, no, 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 you're going into mechanism. I mean, you could do a Mac on top of IS68 yeah. page. So, so there are ways to solve it in crypto, but, but what is like, why did you, so, so, so you said that you, you want to exclude that information from the, um, so it's, so essentially, and there, there's something called iterative check content. So the idea is to be able to, and auto identification, the idea is to uh, use a work cipher that would allow us to use these features the question why encryption at all yeah yeah so, so why it's a mechanism but i'm not understanding what you're using it for um to protect the content of, of the images the, the idea is to if, if you want to migrate a container and you use a public registry for the, for the no the, the image encryption i understand but but i'm not asking about i'm asking about memory page encryption so, because he, he was talking about two different things. So, image encryption is clear, why is it? Okay. But but the memory page encryption is, is what I'm trying to understand. What is that use case for? Because that's being moved, that's going to be moved through a public registry to another system to restore. So oh, so saying that is not saved in, on, on, on the checkpoint. So, you wanted to live migration essentially? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. On memory pages is essentially this files, pages of image. Um, okay. They're, they're part of the but then you need integrity, because um, if it's moved through, you know, untrusted party, you need integrity on that memory page. Yeah, so, so you should mark or do something on top yeah, of. Yeah, can create the hash of, of, the, of the content. So essentially, how do we ensure that uh, with this string, uh, with this cipher, if you modify the ciphertext and you decrypt it back, you will get something. It means that uh, we we have introduced the authentication mechanism. Yeah. Yeah, because IS XTS doesn't have integrity. Yeah, it it's only have limited yeah. malleability. So. Uh, but we have to introduce this on uh, page by page. So yeah, so it would have to be marking, marking, essentially applying the mark on top of that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 